All right, guys, just rolled back in on the two-story ICF job. Floor's in, looks good. It's time to go on up with this one. Man, it is weird being over here and not walking in the mud. It is. <laughs> this is so nice. I feel like I'm on a whole new job site. <laughs> it's crazy. And uh, the owner got rid of all the uh, ruts from the concrete trucks and yeah. rock trucks. So. Yeah, that's, that's uh, you know, here in Dirt Park, we call those whoop de doos whoop de doos <laughs> whoop -de -doos. So. All right, guys, the framer's been here. They got the floor system in. Everything looks... All right, let's try this again. Dead battery. Hate whenever that happens. So anyways, Framer's got the floor system in. Everything looks sharp. Everything fit pretty well. Uh, we're getting ready to get a plan on going on up, but uh, I think we should take a tour of the basement first and see what it looks like down there. Sneak down here in the basement real quick before we go upstairs for a uh, layout. Concrete guys have been down here. Got the floor done. It, uh, it looks pretty good. There's a few spots over there that are a little bit wavy, but they're around some penetrations. I'm sure they got a plan. You can definitely tell they did not use a pump truck. They got quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of concrete splattered up on our beautiful walls, but it'll have to be cleaned out for the drywall guy gets here. But uh, not a huge deal. You can take a, a drywall knife or a putty knife or a scraper or something, go down the wall and uh, get that uh, get that off there. My experience from finishing concrete on these, and you can almost see it right here. You see that line right there? Whenever you got concrete splattered up on the wall. And you run the trial machine down through there, the trial machine knocks it off and it makes it really hard to finish along that wall. So we usually try to keep from doing that, but uh, there you go. There's the line right there. That's the trial machine line. See that line right there? That's from the uh, trial machine. It knocks that off, but uh, all in all, I'd say it looks pretty good. What do you think? I think so. <laughs> now they actually end up using floor trusses on this one and this is the way those brackets end up working. That's the steel plate we put in the wall. We probably end up having that plate about an inch and a half high. They end up raising the floor system on us an inch and a half because they put a seal plate over there. Another beautiful thing about these, it kind of shifts a little bit up and down. So J bracket goes on the board, screws go through the J bracket, through the board and the plate. They work really nice. And then these actually hang, hang up here like so. So it ends up, uh, ends up working out pretty good this is a different framer on this job we've worked with him before he's pretty slick he's worked with some icf before so he kind of knows uh kind of knows what's going on but uh all in all it looks pretty good it's uh i think it's ready for us to go on up with her Probably the first thing and the most important thing whenever you're going to stack round two is everything's got to be clean. You got to make sure you get all the debris out of there. The framer on this job did probably the best job I've ever seen any framer ever do of not tearing up the tops of our blocks. Now, I'm not going to take any credit for this whatsoever, but uh, I did talk to the framer and I asked him, I said, hey man, be careful on the top of our blocks, which is not a bad idea if you got a framer coming behind you guys, but this guy, uh, John, his crew wow they did an awesome 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 job not destroying our block so uh, kudos to the framer on that what we're going to try to figure out here first is basically we're going to go up six more courses yep that's my phone let's see if it's anybody important it is i'll be back all right sorry about that guys but i'm back don't worry so this is where you find out how good of job you did pouring the bottom half because this is probably the most difficult course to stack right here is to get everything interlocked from the top to bottom as you can see so far we just got a couple on here but it is looking it is looking pretty good everything's stacking in nice and tight this joint right here typically ends up being one of the problems you guys remember us putting some extra strapping on that those little clips we used up there at that other icf repair job actually worked pretty good for that too another thing i want to show you here is we had a common splice right here keep in mind we have a transition in the floor system right here so if you're down in the basement hanging drywall you're never going to come this high the drywall in the house is going to take off from here 
So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna transfer this common down to about right here where it hits a window and lines out on the window. Whenever I say transfer the common, let me kind of show you what we're talking about here. I'm gonna try to get this, try to get this block on here. Maybe, stick with me. One handed while I hold a camera. There we go. So what's gonna happen is right here, all the interlocks are gonna line up. I gotta bump that down yet. But the stud, see how this stud lines up and that stud don't? That's gonna be fine for a short period of time. We can get away with that because we're not hanging drywall straight through. So let me get this block down in there and then I'll kind of show you what needs to be done to make that happen right. So basically we we're able to transfer this common down because this block was actually cut on the line, which means the nipples still interlock, but the studs don't line up. So this will be okay for a short period of time until we get to a window and basically either right up the side of the window works best. The center of the window is second best. Just kind of have to see where it, where it falls out at. Uh, on the outside, I shouldn't really mess with the siding guys a whole lot because they can actually see the studs as they go up. So if they got offset there a little bit, they'll be fine. Just makes the uh, stacking process a little bit easier for us. The main thing with this first course is to make sure everything is cleaned out and make sure it is down there and locked. Except for the studs are offset, then it's not gonna lock. But you still gotta make sure it's down there. <laughs> and once it's down there, you gotta make sure it stays down there. You don't I wanna agree. float them back up on you. So. Anyways, unfortunately, I have got to run. I have got to take a little road trip to go possibly pick up a new piece of equipment my wife don't know I bought yet, so that'll be top secret for a while. <laughs> I'm gonna leave Matt and Robbie behind here to stack and we'll be back, uh, be back in a day or so. Hopefully you guys can get uh, two courses all the way around, get all the doors and windows laid out. I'll be back here and then we'll go on up with this thing because it's gonna be nice, it's gonna be a nice house. All right, guys, we're back over here on the two-story ICF level job. And I swear this job is an absolute magnet for bad weather. The minute we pull in, it starts, starts downpouring. We're going to at least try to get braces unloaded. I'll get you guys kind of caught up to speed with what we got going on here. Oh, brace. There we go. Get these wiggled out of here. There we go, got them. I think this might be the last basement or the last ICF job. You guys get to see the. Uh, out there mocking me, I see him. This might be the might be the last ICF job you guys get to see the old uh, plumb wall braces on. But uh, good news, Matt, the guy that helped me on the last basement, I think he's going to take over some of my ICF. Uh, we get so many leads and so many inquiries about, it, I just can't uh, keep up. But I think Matt may take over some of that. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping Matt buys these braces because then I get the best of both worlds. He gets braces, I give him work, but if I need them, I can borrow them. So wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be just awesome? But before all that happens, we have got to get this job done somehow. This one's been a, the job itself's not been that hard. It's just the weather. The weather's been kicking our butt on this one. But uh, I can't get too far out there because I can't get it back over the wall later. A lot of these brace racks, we've been, the more we use these braces, the more we like them. Really, really figuring out how they work, all the little tricks to them. They're a uh, super, super, super nice setup. I, if it was 15, 20 years ago when I was getting into the ICF industry, there is no doubt these are the braces I would buy after using them on multiple pours. I've used a lot of different braces and these, uh, these, are, these are probably the, the real deal right here. But anyways, let's get this last, uh, get these braces unloaded. We're gonna get our rebar stage in the house and then uh, see what this weather's doing, I guess.
All right, guys, we gave up on her yesterday. The rain would just not quit, but check it out. Finally, that's the sun coming up. The sun is coming up today. So Matt actually snuck over here ahead of us the other day and stuck around and got two courses up all the way around. And uh, it's, it's going good. Everything snapped together good. Our interlock clean out was good. Everything was good. Now, what I did this morning is just kind of walk around and inspected all these joints, uh, kind of see and make sure everything's proportional there, kind of look at all the walls make sure we don't have anything if we have any imperfections in the basement wall below the last thing we want to do is transfer that to the upstairs wall we want to get that fixed and addressed almost immediately and fortunately it looks like we did a very good job on the basement wall so we don't have a whole lot to fix or repair and uh, that's even more impressive if you guys remember we went from basement to crawl space and this wall up here don't know the difference it's just absolutely absolutely beautiful so uh, unfortunately, I got other meetings and cannot stick around here today, so I'm going to turn Matt and the uh, I'm going to turn Matt and the crew loose, let them do some stacking. I think Matt may do some filming on uh, his channel. Hey, easy on my wall there, Paco. I don't like it. John, John has traveled. John has traveled John in from. Your way. Okay. John has traveled in from great distances to help you, and you're destroying my wall. Well, I didn't. I only had one stud pass that. I didn't like it, so I'm up to take right. it further. Hey, I'll agree with you. I know. I, I know you will. I told my people that there, there, there's going to be some filming on the Mr. Millennial channel, so don't let me know. NYA Millennial. NYA Millennial. Did you hear that, guys? Mr. Millennial. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Don't teach John any bad habits. I'm going to teach him all the bad habits. <laughs> From Southern Indiana, working in Kentucky. <laughs> all right, guys. We've got Robbie and John and Matt on the job, and uh, we'll be back to check on them. All right, guys, we have finally, we have finally got a beautiful day of weather. We're gonna make some progress on this project. We got uh, the one and only Jerry over there on the dozer. Captain Kleeman's actually over here running the uh, excavator for a while. Captain Kleeman's gonna be covering all that on his channel because uh, we have to focus on this ICF. So let's step inside here, get you guys caught up to speed a little bit about where we're at. So whenever I left you guys, uh, Matt and John were getting the bottom two courses and getting all the doors and windows laid out and then we have continuously gotten rained out from there and just been hit and miss as little hit and miss little pieces here and there. So we have got the braces up. We have got the fifth course stacked. We actually just went ahead and did this all from a ladder because it's it's been the struggle bus guys. I'm just going to be honest with you. It's been the struggle bus. There's a few things I want to um, point out. Now, um, if you guys follow me on my channel for a while, I've got a lot of the basics covered in other videos i got an entire playlist on the channel about uh, icf and, and different jobs we did 
But uh, a few things, this is what we were talking about. Matt relocated the common right there where it goes through the window. That uh, simplifies things, eliminates the strapping. And a few other things, if you look over here on this side, we did not get the common relocated to the window. So uh, not an issue. Uh, we'll get her strapped up, we'll get her poured. It's not gonna be a big deal, honestly. Uh, aesthetics wise, which eventually gets covered up, it's not as pretty. And it's a little bit more work for us because we got a strap here and then strap there. But I want to point out one thing where uh, Nudura kind of becomes a little bit of a shortcoming and it has to do with the way doors and windows or tops of walls potentially fall out. And uh, we've run into it a little bit on this job here. So basically this fifth course, if you stack it out, you end up with about two and a half to three inches above this window. And if you cut this block at two and a half or three inches, you are right in the middle of this mess. It actually leaves one web here and everything else is gone. And guys, I have poured that. It is extremely difficult to keep that from pushing, moving, or even worse yet, blowing out. Now, Nudura does make a thing they call a height adjuster. So you can come down here somewhere on this course here and basically put a three inch block in there, which will gain you three inches up here. Uh, it is, uh, it, is a, it is a corrective matter. I mean, it does work. We've never really been a big fan of using those. So what we do in this situation here is we go ahead and just pretend like this block doesn't exist. We don't mess with that little bitty piece right in there. And as you guys will see above this window here, we will throw a two by four in up there on the edge. Uh, and that fills in that gap. That also gives them a good place to hang window treatments and the finished product as far as the finishers coming in behind us. Uh, they got a lot more to screw to. It's usually straighter, it's usually flatter. Uh, are you giving up a little bit of insulation there? Uh, it's worth it. I mean, uh, minimal, minimal at best. It's worth it. So what we're gonna do now is we got one more course to go on around here. Since we have so many, th this is probably the, the most important course to stack. This is probably also the most difficult course to stack. And the reason for that is, whenever you go across these doors and windows, these penetrations, you gotta maintain, make sure you maintain your gap and everything locks in. Like this one here's gonna gotta have a common in it. So we need to make sure we maintain that, um, maintain that distance. And then since it's only one course, we need also need to make sure we maintain the top plane of the wall. So that's what we're getting ready to tackle. Well, that's that. All right, guys, I'm gonna have to apologize. After I filmed that last little bit, I had a major camera failure. Uh, it fell off the scaffolding and broke. So I tried to film a little bit with my iPhone. It was too windy and it was horrible. So I'm gonna go around here, kind of get you guys caught up to speed. And basically whenever I left you last, we were stacking that top course around here. And I was talking about how important it is to make sure that's probably the most difficult course to stack. A couple things I want to point out about that is one thing I like about New Dura, like these big windows, is whenever you go over a big penetration like this, which we're going to call this window a big penetration, you've got to make sure you maintain distance and plane across the top. Uh, I find it a lot easier to do with New Dura in these long and big blocks. Uh, the Fox block or some of the other shorter blocks, they can be done. It just takes a little bit more effort and a little bit more time to do that. I believe I covered uh, all these windows here, kind of how we did that and, and, and uh, made up for that distance there in that block. The other thing is this top course usually takes a lot of extra strapping. You've got blocks that aren't quite tied in here. You've got windows close, to the, uh, windows close to the corner. You really need to pay attention to some uh, things going on there and don't be shy. If, 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 if it even crosses your mind, you may need to throw an extra strap in there. Uh, get, that extra, get that extra strap thrown in there. We have done our normal. We have went around and got these walls. These walls here are like 57 feet. And honestly, I do not camber these walls in as far as I would if it was a basement wall. And the reason for that is, is one, my foot from my scaffolding or my, my plumb wall braces is a lot more secure screw to this floor than what it is down there in the mud. So I do have a little bit of control over that play in the wall. The other reason is with all these doors and windows and these penetrations, if you bring it in too far, it makes it hard to get it out straight. So you, do, you still want it cambered in a little bit, but you want to make sure you don't get in farther than what you need because uh, it's not like just a long straight ICF wall. Uh, you'll, you'll, be fighting, you'll be fighting that a little bit around those doors and windows and you may find yourself throwing an extra brace or an extra stiffener in there to uh, get a little bit of that uh, 
chink back out we have went around again laid out all of our trusses we'll put our insert plates in there if you guys remember from the last job these dots over here represents where we went around and took the little half moon out a lot of the same procedures will be in play as far as working concrete underneath the doors and the windows and then all that stuff so my plan is on this one since i didn't get the stacking covered as well as what i'd hope to because of just craziness going on guys just craziness uh we got a lot of extra help here today matt and his crew's here learning i'm trying to train those guys to uh uh do, do some icf installing and uh, we have a, a youtube visitor that come in uh, he's looking to build an icf house we're doing some training with him so i will try to cover the pour as much as i possibly can because i'm going to be getting a lot of instructions to those guys because it's the first time they have poured which may in turn end up for some good information for you guys pick up on some tricks of the trade and uh, see how stuff works so we'll uh see what happens so uh, it's officially go time is everybody ready we're at it is this like icf training course 101 what do we do huh what do we do this is icf training 101 oh you have one job listen to everything i have to say it's that simple all right Changes on every job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving you multiple techniques. You're welcome. It's hard to keep That's track. That's a good call, though. Got Jason back on the hose. If you're working for the competition, at least you got the right shirt on. We'll get him a MR shirt. In the he may be working for the competition. Hose, hose, hose. But you're training the competition. This is true. <laughs> All right, guys, so we're going to do the usual here. John's down here with the 2x4. He's going to be kind of seeing what we're at in the wall. Hunter's got our vibrator. He's going to be working as much as he can underneath the windows there. And we're waiting on a pump truck operator to show up. He's walking around over there, so it's about go time. vibrator up and around the second round or third round right now down. so after he goes fast right. you're good well now just kind of just vibrate this part right here uh -huh. go on down all right now jump over and get this window Hunter. Hey. You can't let him get too far ahead of you. You can't work it in there. All right, come on the other side now. Right, guys so we started in this corner the first truck took us around to that corner so basically halfway around 
Uh, we did have to make one adjustment halfway through. These windows down here through the vibration, we were getting good, good concrete flow underneath the windows and doors or windows. But what we got here, our truck started drying up for some reason. So we actually had to make a little adjustment to our concrete to get it to react the way we wanted to. And uh, once we got back to this one, we started going pretty good. I'll uh, show you here towards the end how we'll, uh, not, not a big deal. It just makes sure it work for us getting below those doors and windows here in a minute. But uh, truck number two rolled in and we're heading that way. You learned anything yet? Suck it in. Yeah, I'm learning. <laughs> learning to suck it in with camera. <laughs> Sound like Jerry now. I don't have your winter weight off yet, dude. <laughs> yeah, I haven't shed my winter coat. <laughs> well, if he's pouring right there, you know, Jason's not putting that concrete right down next to the window. He's about to stub cab me over. And Hunter's trying to get it to fall underneath there with that vibrator. <laughs> All right, guys, we just finished the first lap around here. We're about two and a half courses up. Jason's going around on the third. So this this course here, Hunter, Yeah. what you need to do is vibrate the top of this header real quick and make sure we're around that concrete, around that rebar. That's what we're talking about the slope. It didn't quite get full. We'll have to come back here in a minute and uh, drop a hose down in there and, and grab that. So. No, leave those. Just the big middles. Just the big middles, yeah. We're out of concrete. All right, truck number three is rolled in. Some of the guys are starting to get our insert plates staged, so they'll be ready to go as we top off on the, the third course, or the third lap. Now, this second course, 90% of the time, if you're going to have an issue, it's, it's on this second lap around. So far, everything's holding pretty good. Uh, everybody's kind of learning learning what needs to be done. I think what may be helpful of this video is after we're done, I'll, uh, I'll, get, I'll interview some of these guys and kind of see what... Uh, what they picked up on what uh, what i'm not conveying to you guys in the videos as good as what i could so uh so far so good jason and hunter are moving on down the wall down the wall with the hose matt's coming back and basically what he's doing is vibrating really well around the window bucks making sure everything's good and consolidated around the bucks we got a lot of rebar up there these big openings we just want to make sure we get that uh Get that concrete around there real well. We are pulling up to about about this high. We're up there in there somewhere. So we'll have about a block and a half from the top. The reason we do that is a little extra pressure, a little less pressure on everything down below. And then we go to top off that top, it's just a little bit of concrete. We got all these insert plates and stuff in there. So we want the uh, good uh, pliable wet concrete to get everything seated in there proper the way we need to. So moving on. Hey, Hunter, take your trial, keep it flat and run it to 45, 45, yeah, you gotta have the right. There you go, 45 degree angle and keep it pretty flat. Let's go, piece of rebar, it's gonna be loud. So Hunter's trying to stay pretty close to Chase and top it off the wall so we're not wasting a bunch of concrete. John's putting just a little bit of the finish on it and Matt's coming behind him and he's gonna start putting those insert plates in on those lines. Now, as soon as he gets all that done, I'll hop up there and start aligning walls. It's hard to align walls with all the guys standing on the uh, scaffolding as it affects it a little bit. So down, the wall, down the wall we go. Robbie's coming back underneath. Now at this point, we're pulling up all the boards, and so that way whenever we come back around, we'll be prepared to uh, fill that void down there. All right, guys, Matt's got his insert plates in. The wall looks pretty good. So I'm up here. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna eyeball down this wall and make sure I don't have anything that's just way out of kilter or out of proportion. Everything looks pretty close. So at this point, I'm actually gonna go to the center of the wall. Uh, the center of the wall, I'm gonna check the string measurement there, see how much actual camber we still have left in the wall. And I'm probably gonna work my way back and forth from there. Now, uh, if you guys see my previous video, the subscriber was nice enough to send me a 36 inch extension with a swivel bit inch and an eighth on the bottom and it is a game changer on these plumb wall braces we are really liking these plumb wall braces they're definitely an improvement over what we had and uh, this here is just another tool to actually make it work really well you can kind of see 
see how that works there. So let's see what we got. Real quick guys, I just want to jump in here and say a few things real quick. First off, I just want to give a huge thanks to uh, Plum Wall for allowing us to demo these braces. I believe this will most likely probably be the last uh, video we do with these. I think we had five or six pours under our belt with them. And uh, just like any time you use a new product, the more you use it, the more you kind of tr figure out the tricks and the nuances to it. And uh, the more we use these braces, the more and more impressed uh, I become with them. Uh, even though on this job, as you guys can see off to the left here, I do have plenty of help on the job. The most impressive part about these braces to me, and this come into play big time on the ICF repair job where we had some issues during the pour, is it, turn, it turns aligning walls from a three-person job to a one-person job. And I'm confident I can get a better job of aligning walls with these braces with less help for two reasons. One, there is no communication with a guy on the ground. If, I, if, if that wall needs to be adjusted, I know exactly what it needs and I can actually make that adjustment myself. And two, these, thing, these things seem to have uh, a little bit more leverage on the wall. They seem to be able to manipulate the wall a little bit better than braces I've used in the past, uh, which allows you to also get a straighter wall. So um, to answer uh, the question in the simplest way I know how is uh, would I buy these braces? And if, if I was going to start my ICF career today or I was intending on getting into the ICF business, uh, after doing a lot of research and using multiple different forms of braces, at this point there is no doubt this would be my uh, brace of choice. I'm kind of on the other end of that. I'm trying to kind of work my way out of the ICF industry, so I'm not for sure if I'll be actually purchasing these braces for that reason. Uh, but with a little bit of luck, maybe we can talk Matt into buying these braces and we'll still see him on a dirt perfect job from time to time. So, uh, but yeah, just to recap, guys, uh, a great opportunity. Thanks to all you guys, uh, all you awesome subscribers that support the channel that allow me to have opportunities with uh, good companies like Plum Wall to uh, showcase a product like this. And um, yeah, I, um, I'm really impressed with the product. It's definitely an improvement over what we're using, using currently. And I, I really like the... Uh, the ability for one person to handle this phase of the pour because uh, uh, like I said I'm going to point it out again you know on the on the previous pour where we had some issues and uh, if you don't have a lot of guys on the job help gets a little bit scarce and uh, this here will this here will help free up a free up a couple people all right guys so my system is I basically check these walls uh, four times so the first time I go to do this I'll get all the braces within a half inch of the string Second time I'll come back here within a quarter inch of the string. Third time I'll get it right on the string. And then the fourth is a good visual inspection of the wall. And that wall is as straight as they get, boys and girls. That wall is straight. So um, I guess technically you can maybe say there's a fifth time in there because after we get all four walls lined up, I'll do one final inspection, walk around and make sure adjusting something over there somehow didn't affect this. It normally don't, but it don't hurt to double check. So. Our last trucks just rolled in. Uh, they're continuing to top off the walls over there. I'm going to jump in behind them and adjust this wall. I'm going to try to set you guys up on a little bit of a time lapse. Maybe you can actually watch the wall being adjusted, kind of see my process, and we'll continue on. There you have it guys, another perfectly straight ICF wall. It's just that simple. So they are getting ready to top off. They gotta go from here to that corner. They'll have all the walls topped off from there. 
Sean's going to lower the hose down the outside of the building, and we'll come around and we'll finish filling in below these doors and windows. If we would have had the slump a little closer to being right on that first truck, we probably could have flowed that, but it didn't work. So, uh, second option is you lower the truck around. It's a little bit of a messier option, uh, but you got to get them filled. That's what seems to work pretty good. If it's a five gallon bucket or less, we'll usually just pour a little pile somewhere and shovel it in, but that's a little more than a five gallon bucket. So we'll let those, uh, let those guys uh, do that. And then whatever concrete we got left over, we actually got a small retaining wall set up down below. So we'll just, uh, we'll polish off that retaining wall with any extra concrete. So going very well so far. Well, there you have it guys. The walls are all poured, everything's straight. It looks absolutely awesome. We could not ask for that to go any better. They're topping off the retaining wall down there with a little bit of extra concrete we have. Let's hop down, hop down, check her out, and uh, see what we got. All right, guys, we are all poured out. So uh, I got John here. John's interested in building an ICF house. And you actually took the new Dura training class, correct? Yes, sir. Which actually I would highly recommend for anybody that has no construction experience, no ICF experience. There's a lot of good basic knowledge there. I took uh, the, the new Dura online course, uh, which is uh, module by module or chapter by chapter. Uh, and they, it's, uh, it's their PDF manual online right on their website, New Dura. Uh, and New Dura does have a lot of really good information online. That's correct. Yeah. So, so you can sign up, uh, it doesn't cost anything. Uh, you can download their manual. Uh, you can take the modules one chapter at a time uh, at your oh, leisure, yeah. as long as it takes. And then separately, New Dura just recently opened up their uh, one day in-person class after the uh, yeah, China great. virus has died down a little bit. <laughs> And uh, uh, so I took their class in uh, Venice. Randy, uh, Randy and uh, John were the two facilitators. And um, uh, they, uh, part of their class is chapter by chapter. It's augmented with videos. And then they also have new Dura product on site. So there's a hands-on uh, portion uh, in the morning and in the afternoon where you actually uh, apply this. So you would say everything you learned in that class was definitely beneficial. Oh, absolutely. So I guess my question is to you, and this is what's hard for me to convey sometimes, is I've been doing it for a while, so I take a lot of things for granted. I just do them because that's what we know needs to be done or it's what we've done for years or vice versa. So um, being out here on the job site, seeing us stack one out, seeing us pour one, kind of seeing, for the most part, start to finish. Correct. Uh, what, how, did, how did that uh, experience rate versus classroom experience? So um, it's, it's funny you ask that question because there were several times when I, when I thought to myself, wow, that's not in the book or, uh, or we didn't mention that. Now, uh, with due respect to Randy, who was the primary facilitator of the, of the one day in person class, um, he also taught from the perspective of uh, years of building experience. So he was also giving us tips that were not in the book on how to make the process of block stacking and and rebar placement go Efficient. faster uh, and how you could save, you know, a, a 20 minutes per, per employee you had on the site. And at the end of the day, that's gonna save you two hours. At the end of a big project, it might save you two days. So uh, I would highly recommend not only uh, in-person experience like I've gained here with Dirt, Dirt Perfect's uh, build here, Dirt Perfect's perfect build <laughs> here, uh, but- uh, Appreciate that. Randy also, uh, his, his insights and, and the little techniques to save you time and money, uh, that was pretty priceless too. Yeah. So a lot of what Randy's talking about, what I remember from the class, and I do know Randy, he's a good guy, is stuff we had implemented whenever we were hammering these things out time and time again. It's a lot of systematic stuff as far as, you know, writing rebar numbers on the wall, 
uh, having uh, the proper, you know, pre-cut block, pre-stage and stuff, and, and kind of working in waves almost and going on around through there. Uh, I guess one thing, after you learn the basics, that'll get you by, but it's learning those little tricks that'll really make a good pour. Absolutely. It is kind of what the on-job experience, I think, will teach you versus the the classroom style stuff, so. Absolutely, without um, a doubt. Uh, and uh, quite frankly, uh, of everything I learned online and in the in-person class, uh, I don't I don't think it, that qualified me in any way to go and start a big project on my own right. without actually coming and apprenticing and getting getting some good uh, hands-on experience now, first. Well, we had this conversation a little bit about, you know, we used to build ICF houses from the footer up. And we also, we were also the GC, so we'd go back and hang drywall and hang trim and stuff like that on it. And I was pointing out to you a lot of things we did, basically having the drywall or the framer or the next guy behind in, me in mind. In mind. Where a straight up ICF crew, they're just worried about getting the concrete down the wall and making sure it's there. It's, right, it's there and hopefully straight. Yeah, hopefully straight. So, but uh, we pretty much had a flawless pour today. Had an absolutely beautiful day. Uh, appreciate you joining us. Beautiful Indiana day. <laughs> hopefully, Thanks so much for... Thanks. Kentucky Day. Yeah, we're That's in right. Kentucky. We're in Kentucky. Kentucky. So, hopefully you took something away from it. Thanks and, for the uh, invitation. This is no priceless. No problem, man. We, uh, we enjoyed you having it. It was a lot of fun having you around. So, guys, that's going to be a wrap on this one. Uh, I do apologize. I did not cover as much of the stacking as I did. I have several, several, several videos on the channel that covers that. Uh, so, if you guys want to go back and check those videos out, and uh, I'm sure they'll be... I'm sure, uh, I'm sure there'll be more videos in the future. I do thank Matt on the Mr. Millennial channel. N-Y-A Millennial. Mr. Millennial channel has a few of those. Uh, he's actually got a little bit of a thing to this <laughs> On that note, we're out of here, folks. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. As always, we'll catch you on the next one.